the last game of the day. You're up to nine and serving for the match. All you need to do is win this last point. The last three points, you went for powerful deep serves. Your opponents made them in, but they really pushed them back. But on this next point though, you have a new trick up your sleeve. You can see that since you started serving harder, your opponent started standing way farther back. He's practically standing 10 feet behind the baseline. On this next serve, you're not gonna go hard. You're gonna go for a low screwball serve. You go for it and it works. Game, set, match. Hey guys, I'm Connor and welcome to Enhanced Pickleball. Today, we're talking about serves. So most players on our channel can consistently make their serves. But today, we're gonna go over how to mix up your serve so that your opponents are always guessing. And let me tell you, the most effective way to do this is probably not what you think. But actually guys, there's no worse feeling than when you can't win a point on your serve. Trust me, this has happened to every pickleball player at some point. That said, mixing up your serve can be a cool hack to throw your opponents off so that you can get some of your momentum back. But before we go into how to mix up your serve, I wanna go over the main different types of serves that we can switch between. The first I wanna bring up is the topspin serve. If you're to watch pros or any high level players, this is what they're gonna be using most of the time. Pound for pound, this serve will be the most effective and consistent you can use. This is because it's generally pretty easy to make and we aim it higher over the net, which gives us more margin for error. In order to get the topspin, you just need to make sure that the paddle is moving up and down as it's going forward and backward. You don't want it to go too much up and down though, or you won't be able to get enough power and you may miss. Like I said, a little height helps on this serve too. Play around with it, but I think hitting it about three feet over the net actually makes it a little bit trickier for your opponents to react to the bounce. And remember, always try to get your serves deep. The next serve I wanna talk about is the screwball or sidewinder serve. In my opinion, this serve is a great way to mix it up because it really stays low. As opposed to brushing up like I do on my topspin serve, on this serve, I'm cutting from right to left. Because of this, if I get enough spin, the ball will actually curve slightly to the right. If your opponents are in the 3.0 to 4.0 range, this serve will definitely throw them off. One key thing on this serve is that you aim it a little bit lower. Because there's no topspin on the ball, it won't bounce very high. That said, this serve is a great changeup from our higher topspin serves. The last serve on our list is the lob serve. The lob serve can be the ultimate changeup to throw off your opponent's rhythm. Ideally, it goes deeper in the box too. In theory, it should be easier to return the serve, but a lot of players just aren't used to seeing it. Because of this, if you use it at the right times, you'll get some short returns and free points. That said, the lob serve is something that I wouldn't recommend throwing in as often as the other two serves on the list. Think of your lob serve as an occasional changeup that you pull out one to two times per game. That said, those are the three serves that I use, but if you think that I missed something, comment below. A few months ago, I would have included the spin serve in this video, but if you haven't already heard, the spin serve was banned for 2023 play. More specifically, you can no longer add extra spin with your hand. So now that we know the three main serves to use, let's talk about how often that we should use them. When we look at most high level players, the topspin serve is definitely seen as the base. This serve is what you should use at least 50% of the time. Like I said before, pound for pound, this is the most consistent and effective serve that we can use. If you can get really good at hitting the serve hard and deep, you'll consistently make things difficult for your opponents. That said, when we're thinking about mixing up our serve, we should be considering when to throw in the other two serves that we talked about. But there's no straightforward answer that I can give you on this. The way I see it, in the beginning of every game, we need to test between our hard topspin and our low screwball serves. While we're doing this, we're surveying what types of results we're getting from each. If your opponents are having no issues with your topspin serve, but you can tell that the screwball is bothering them, you can use this more. If your topspin serve is giving them trouble, then you can focus on using this most of the time. The lob serve is something that we should use less frequently. Like I said before, maybe one to two times per game. Just know, you're always playing against two different players, so your strategy may need to adjust depending on which one you're serving to. A really important thing to keep in mind is that the higher level your opponents are, the less effective your serves will become. If you're playing a 4.5 plus player, they're probably gonna make 90% of your serves back no matter what you do. That said, in the 3.0 to 4.0 range, we can get some pretty crazy Easy results from mixing up our serve. So if you're playing and your opponents are getting your serves back no matter what, it may make sense to just focus on consistency and getting the ball deep. But if you're winning tons of points on your serve, this is where we can start to think about mixing it up in the 9 tenths rule. The 9 tenths rule means that we should take enough risk on our serve so that we make 9 out of 10. The theory states that the free points and short returns that you get will well make up for the one out of every 10 serves that you miss. So this is an important thing to consider when we're thinking about how much risk that we should take on our serve. Before we move on, if you've liked this video so far, 
We're releasing content like this every week, so make sure to subscribe. We're also doing an epic giveaway where we're giving away over $1,500 in free products to 10 of our lucky subscribers. To enter, subscribe to our channel and head to the link below to check out the giveaway. We'll announce the winner on our Instagram, so make sure to follow us there too. Now we need to consider how to adjust within each type of serve that we're going for. More specifically, we need to consider how hard and deep to serve and where we're aiming in the box. An important thing to think about here is how hard your opponents are hitting their returns. If they're hitting their returns really deep and hard, you might want to try to push them back a little bit. This comes with the risk of missing long, but it'll be worth it to get an easier third shot. For whatever reason, some players hit their returns really deep and hard, so these are the type of players that you want to try to push back. If your opponent's giving you short returns, then you probably don't need to take on the extra risk of going deeper. It's all about managing your consistency, so if you're the type of player that can go deeper and harder on your serve and still make it, go for it. But if you haven't mastered this yet and you still miss them, I wouldn't go for it unless you need to. Another thing to keep in mind is whether we should aim for the forehand or the backhand. Generally, most players' backhands are worse, especially in the 3.0 to 4.0 range. So if you have enough accuracy to get it there, go for it. A lot of the time though, when players have worse backhands, they cheat over to the left and make it impossible for you to get it there. A cool hack to keep these players honest is to serve it really far out to their forehand. Because they're cheating so much to their backhand, they're leaving a ton of court open and you could really throw them off like this. If you do this a few times, they may even scoot over a little bit and give you an opening to go to their backhand. Another really important aspect to mixing up your serve is when you choose to do so. Generally, like I said, your hard topspin should be considered the base serve that you use most of the time. So the question is, at what point in your game should you sprinkle in the others? One good time to throw in some change-up serves is at the very beginning of a match. A lot of the time, players haven't fully gotten their focus early in a game. Think about it, how many times have you missed the first return or serve of a game? The changeup in the beginning of a game can be a great way to take advantage of your opponent's lack of focus. One time that I wouldn't use changeups is on big points. My personal belief is that in important situations, you should go for a safer serve that you know you can make every time. You do not want to risk going for a changeup here and missing the serve. Also, I think returners are generally more focused on these bigger points, which makes it harder to throw them off. Other than that, you should throw in your changeup serves sporadically throughout the game to keep your opponents on edge. For example, if you just hit three top sprint serves in a row, maybe throw in a screwball. The real key is that you assess what's working in each individual game and you lean towards these type of serves. You have to learn to adjust depending on who you're playing against and your own strengths and weaknesses. One thing I'll say though guys is that it's very difficult to add variety to your serve if you don't spend time practicing them. When you're practicing each technique, try to work on getting your serves deep and aiming them in different parts of the box. Remember, after getting your technique down, the only way you'll improve is by getting a ton of reps. The more time you spend intentionally practicing these serves, the faster they'll improve and the easier it'll be to add variety in real games. And if you want to practice other shots on your own, we created the dink pad to be your new drilling partner. The dink pad sticks onto any wall and gives you a way to do wall drills with references for keeping the ball low and out of your opponent's strike zone. If you're someone who needs to work on your dinks, quick hands, resets, or pretty much any pickleball shot, then check out the dink pad at the link in the description. And if you want to learn the technique behind the hard topspin serve, watch this.